Satnam. Hey, everybody. So we're doing a sadna. That's what it's called, sadna. Sadna means meditation practice, personal meditation practice. In kundalini, it means doing it before the sun comes up. Now you'll notice Great Divine Flow is not offering any sadnas at 5.30 a.m., although we will be doing that with the Aquarian sadna very soon. <clears throat> we do it at 9 a.m. before a class and 6 p.m. before a class. But let's talk about what the real invitation is of this grace meditation. God, this mantra. It's just so beautiful that grace understands us and grace will heal our minds and grace will do so much depending on how much Marcia can get out of the way. So the first thing I want to talk to you about with your sadhana is in order to have a sadhana, you are going to give up something. We're so busy, busy. We're busy with work, with obligations, with other things we'd like to do because, oh my God, we deserve those other things. So the first suffering in sadhana is to make time to do it out of a life and a, and a schedule that is already probably packed to the brim. What I know about this is the more I have grown in my sadhana, my spiritual path, the more I realize there's so much that's taking up my day that I don't need to be doing and isn't good for me. And if I let more of those things, you know, uh, you know, surfing on the phone, um, listening to YouTubes of teachers, you know, like too much, right? I'm better off cleaning the house, gardening, preparing for class, preparing to be the teacher I need to be for you. So when truth be told, what is filling up my day is a lot of nonsense sometimes, unbeknownst to me. But sadhana is a victory. And one of its gifts is that it brings us awareness. But let's stay with the suffering of sadhana. So first of all, you got to suffer being inconvenienced, getting up earlier, taking time to do something that maybe is not a part of your daily routine. <clears throat> so we want to acknowledge that suffering because what we know on a spiritual path is suffering is the gateway to acceptance and acceptance is enlightenment so that we lean into the cold shower we don't just go 20 seconds and get out like it's like this is uncomfortable this is what I said I would do and I do it and and then sadhana you know, kundalini yoga, it is the yoga of awareness. And it's such a beautiful thing. Like I can sit back in the cold shower and just watch my mind suffer. And a lot of times, like Tony is much more he, good at it. <laughs> How else do I say it? I scream often, ah! you know, <clears throat> because the, the tension of my mind and its suffering is like, oh my God, so much. So sometimes I will let out sound to just sort of dissipate that. But when I really go the distance of, you know, rough brushing my skin and doing like a process and staying in there at least three minutes, that suffering stops about a minute into it. And then it's really not that cold. Now it becomes the observant of me, of my soul watching my mind complain and separate from life itself. And by the, the last minute, the soul is consoling the mind and now becoming the bigger power. And this is what the key is to all spiritual practice. When we lean in, we get to be the witness to the soul. Oh my God, the soul is great. I mean, this is your slice of God and it's living right inside of you. So the soul gets to do this number on you. You know, and it lets you complain and the, and, and the complaining sort of takes a life of its own and then wears itself out. And then the soul offers solace, strength, comfort. It, it has great empathy for our humanity. And at the same time, it, it offers our, our body and mind a place to surrender to, not to become weak to become all-powerful. 
And the real power is in love. We trust God or the synonym love. That this is a part of my sadhana and I'm going to trust it. Now we get on the mat <clears throat> and we're learning this 10th purdy, right? And um, because I got sick, I just really did not get the jump on this 10th purdy. So I'm struggling it with you. Sunya sata satok gyan, sunya anta sataka ishnam, sunya pada pada pave man, suna lage sata dian, nanik bagata sada vigas, sunya du kapapa kanas. And we struggle through it. Though the, it won't, you know, we're all on different learning curves. It usually takes me about five to six days of struggle before I can pretty much um, say it without looking. But it doesn't matter because in the struggle, God is blessing me with grace. Sadhana is happening. And this mantra means that deeply listening, I'll attain truth and contentment, spiritual wisdom. Oh, deeply listening, I'm taking a cleansing bath. I'm being baptized in the light. By deeply listening, I am receiving the benefit of the sacredness and honor is obtained. By deeply listening, my intuition grows and the essence of the meditation blossoms forever on the sanctuary of my heart. Deeply listening, the pain of separation disappears. So here's the thing. You're like chanting the mantra That's, you know, and there's a part of you that's listening. So the mind and even the body, because the face and the mechanics of making words that you do not understand, you are in uh, what you call mantra yoga, okay? It's physical, it's mental, it's its own thing. And then after that, but you've been digesting and saying these words that are making secretions in your mind that are causing a deep listening, It doesn't necessarily mean that in that instant you're getting the voice of God because you're busy trying to get get it get through it, right? So then you do conquering imagined disabilities. Nine minutes of this breath with these beautiful movements that are activating meridians that further give space for for a sadhana's blessing, give space for grace. The meridians are activated. They, they will act up. They almost make you feel paralyzed when you're twisting the light bulb at the first one. But the, that meridian, especially in the wrist, it gets worked upon, which floods the heart, which gives you more oxytocin, which enlightens you. It's that simple. So now you've done this blessing and you do this amazing sad, um, kriya and now you sit. And that's where... You get to have the blessing of your suffering. Didn't want to do it. Don't know why you're doing it, but here you are. And God gets all of it, right? Love knows. Love conquers. So now my suffering has gone from suffering to acceptance, to curiosity, to grace. And every day, every sadhana has its own gifts and takeaways. It also has its own detriments. What you'll get really good at over years of practice, because God's detriments are in our meditation, but in life, that tax bill you didn't accept, that, um, you know, this cold, I didn't want to have a cold right now, right? All of it becomes, huh, I'm doing cold right now. I'm going to go as slow as I need to go. I love this one line from Karen Drecker. She says, "Um, I will be gentle with myself. I will go as slow as the slowest part of me needs to go. That's a grace to have the wisdom to know that. And I hope that this sadhana is bringing you grace. And I will tune in with you tomorrow. Satnam.